All right, how's everybody doing today? We're going to take a look at section 2.3, which is applying deductive reasoning. So this is going to be the section we're going to take a look at here, and we're going to take a look at two laws. But before we get into those, first we've got to define what deductive reasoning is. And it is deductive reasoning that uses facts, definitions, accepted properties, and the laws of logic to form a logical argument. So deductive reasoning is going to be what we're going to use throughout this chapter. Now, one of the laws of logic we're going to talk about is the law of detachment. Now, the law of detachment is going to be broken up into two different pieces. The first piece is going to start off if P and then Q. So you're going to look for this pattern. P is going to be in the beginning, and then you're going to, that's going to be your hypothesis and your conclusion. Q is going to be at the end of that. Now, for the second statement that you get, you'll again, you'll start off, you'll be given the information about P. Now, if that's the order that things are presented in, then you can make the following conclusion. You can conclude that true Q is going to be true. So let's take a look at our three examples here to kind of see what uh, what that looks like. Now, in our first, uh, first example, we've got this piece right here. If two segments are the same length, then they are congruent. You know that BC equals XY. So what we're going to do is take a look at first identifying the hypothesis. Now, in this one, it's pretty straightforward because we have the word if. And that's going to be a clue. So this piece right here, segments have, if two segments have the same length, that's going to be our hypothesis. Now, the conclusion, the Q part, that's going to be then they are congruent. So that's our initial statement, if P then Q. It's already in that format for us, so that's really nice. Now, the second statement says, you know that BC equals XY. Well, BC equals XY, that's telling us that those two segments do have the same length. So if those two segments have the same length, then I can make the conclusion that BC, because my, hypo or my hypothesis, P, two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. I'm told that BC equals XY, which is the same thing as my initial hypothesis. So I can go ahead and make the conclusion then that the two segments, BC, is congruent to XY. Now I can write it like this in symbols, or I could actually write it out in words. And I could say BC is congruent. So I could write it out like this. Now, small little detail thing. If I use the symbols to go ahead and do this, notice how BC has got the little bar over it and so does XY. But if I use the words and I say BC is congruent to XY, again, I want to make sure I put this, the bars over that, just like that. So segment BC is congruent to segment XY. That's going to be my conclusion. So on to example B. Now this time we've got Becky going to the movies every Friday and Saturday night, and we're told today is Friday. Now this one's a little bit more challenging sometimes because it doesn't have the word if or then in it, so it's a little hard for some people to figure out well, which piece is a conclusion and which piece is a hypothesis. So when you take a look at it, take a look at it from the perspective of which thing has to happen in order for something else to happen. So if Becky goes to the movies, is it have to be Friday or Saturday night, or is it going to be something along the lines of if it's Friday or Saturday night, then Becky's going to go to the movies. And if we think about it from that perspective, it, it might be a little bit more intuitive. So Friday and Saturday night, that's going to be our hypothesis, which means then Becky going to the movies, that's going to be the conclusion. Now, if I take a look at my second statement, we're told that today is Friday. Now, since it's Friday, that's actually part of my hypothesis, that part that in this case is highlighted in green, because Friday is one of the words that's highlighted. So if that's the case, and I can go ahead and make the conclusion, if we know that today's Friday, well, then we know that Becky's going to go to the movies. So our conclusion is going to be Becky will go to the movies. Now, in example C, we want to take a look at it. Same kind of idea, but I just wanted to give this to show you guys what one would look like when we would not be able to apply the law of detachment. So it's almost the same component as before. Friday and Saturday night, that's going to be our hypothesis. Becky going to the movies, that's going to be our conclusion. 
but here I'm told that today is Sunday, and that's not close. That's not Friday or Saturday night. So when that kind of thing happens, when we're looking at the law of detachment and we can't come up with a conclusion, then we can't use the law of detachment. A lot of times, book will, books will just say invalid. Okay, so. Uh, there's no conclusion I can come up with using the law of detachment based on the information I'm presented with. So that's a real quick overview of the law of detachment. Now, the next law that we're going to get into, this one is going to be very, very similar to what a lot of people will think of as the transitive property. Here, and let's kind of take a look at the way it's set up. Now, it's going to be set up in this, this kind of format here, where you have if P, then Q, and if Q, then R. And what I want you to pay attention to here are the individual letters. So the order of the letters, notice how you have P then Q. So you've got one entire statement. Then you've got a second statement that's going to start off with the way the previous one ended. So if Q then R. Now if that's the case, then you can make the conclusion if P then R. Now with this, we're going to take a look at four different examples to see if we can apply the law of syllogism for these to write new conditional statements from the two that were given. Now in our first example here, we're going to take a look at this statement. If Jeff takes chemistry this year, then he'll take it eighth period. If Jeff t has it eighth period, then Adam is Jeff's lab partner. Now, first thing I want to do is identify my hypothesis in the first statement and my conclusion in the first statement. Now, when I look at my second statement, I want to do the same thing. I want to identify the hypothesis and conclusion. Now notice the hypothesis of my second statement is going to be the same thing as my conclusion from the first statement. Now looking at the conclusion of the second statement, Adam's just lab partner. Now if that's the case, what I can do is I can take the conclusion from the second statement and the hypothesis from the first statement. I can put those two together to go ahead and make a sentence. And this is what that sentence would look like. So my conclusion would be, if Jeff takes chemistry this year, then Adam is Jeff's lab partner. So it's really easy to see how to put that one together. Now, example B, this one is actually a little bit more tricky, because if you just kind of read it from the beginning, and then we'll pick it apart. So let's go, go through and read it together. We've got x squared is greater than 25, then x squared is greater than 20. Second statement says, if x is greater than 5, then x squared is greater than 25. Now, on this one, this one is a really, really tricky one because if you notice the hypotenuse, the hypothesis of the first statement is the same thing as the conclusion of the second statement. So what I'm going to do when we take a look at that, we, we're going to have this piece right here, the x squared greater than 25, that's going to be the same in both of them. So that's going to, if I were to reorder those sentences and I had the second statement first, if x is greater than 5, then x squared, or I'm sorry, yeah, x squared is greater than 25. If that was my first statement and my second statement was if x squared is greater than 25, then x squared is greater than 20. If it was in that order, it would be really easy to see. In this case, they flipped that around. And so one of the errors that a lot of students will make and people will make when they first take a look at that is they're going to look at the order and say, well, the order matters, and that's incorrect. The order in which the statements are given does not affect whether or not you can use log cosines, and that's very, very important to make sure that we've got down. Now, taking a look at my second statement, this piece right here, if x is greater than 5, that's my hypothesis for the second statement. And the conclusion for my first statement is the x squared minus 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two statements again, because I don't want to make that error and think that, well, the order matters. I have to have it in the order P, Q, Q, R to make the conclusion if P, then R. I don't want to make that mistake and say, well, it must be in that order. So you really have to be careful with this one. Now, when we highlight everything, we can really see and come up with our conclusion very simply. So our conclusion for this one, we can use the law of syllogism in this example, and we could say if x is greater than 5, then x squared is greater than 25. So that would actually be the conclusion for example b. I could use the law of syllogism to come up with that. Now when we take a look at example c. c is a lot more straightforward, I think, when it comes to taking a look at a pattern. So let's, let's uh, go ahead and get after this one. 
When it starts out, it says if a polygon is regular, then all the angles of the interior of the polygon are congruent. And then my second statement starts off the same way as my first statement did. If a polygon is regular, uh, then all the sides are congruent. So with this kind of piece, if I want to take a look at it from a, um, you know, just looking at highlighting, just looking at the colors, here for the second statement, or the first statement, here from the first statement, I'm going to have the conclusion, all my interior angles are congruent. My second statement doesn't start off that way, and it doesn't end the way my first statement began. Now, as you can see from the way we have this highlighted, it's really, really kind of simple to take a look at this. Now, if we wanted to look at it from a, uh, just from a symbolic perspective, this kind of has this format right here. If P, then Q, or P implies Q, but then my second statement is going to be if P then R. So I'm not going to be able to use the law of syllogism at all because that clearly doesn't look like what the law of syllogism states. Those two, in this particular case, when you have uh, two statements like this, your conclusion is just going to be invalid. You cannot use the law of syllogism. Now we've got one more example here for our law of syllogism and I think by now you guys probably can see this a little bit so if you think you have it go ahead and hit pause highlight if you need to make the conclusion that you need to if there is one whether you can come up with a statement or if you cannot use the law of syllogism then you just say invalid if you need to do it together all right let's go ahead and get after this now first thing we're going to do is take a look at the first statement if Kylie has Mrs. Shuddy for geometry. Miss Shuddy, one of my great friends and everything. Love her. She's absolutely phenomenal. And my conclusion for my first statement. Second statement starts off if Kylie works and studies hard. So that's going to be the same thing as how the previous one ended. So same color, you know, or same letter if we're looking at it from a symbolic perspective. If Kylie works and studies hard, then she'll get an A for the year. So this is totally new. And again, if I take a look at it just from a symbolic perspective, I've got, okay, P implies Q for the first part, and then I start off the second statement, Q implies R, which means my conclusion, I can go right from P to R, which in this case, I would end up with the following statement. So again, our conclusion for this one is going to be if Kylie has Miss Shuddy for, the, for geometry, then she'll get an A for the year. And just a little tidbit, Kylie is the name of one of my granddaughters. All right, boys and girls, that is going to be it for the laws of deductive reasoning. There's only two of them, law of detachment, law of syllogism. So we'll go ahead and apply these and work on these in class. And I know some of you guys are working on your commercials. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look forward to seeing you guys soon in class. All right, have a great day, and I will see you again all very soon.